I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give one of my colleagues a little free advertising because they are also in this world of marketing and such. And she's got a website and a very cool blog all about marketing. Um, and there's a particular blog post I really want you to look at because it's so comprehensive, so in-depth about ideas of what to do via marketing. So let's go here. Open up your web browser, any web browser you like. And let's go to the address brandgfx.com, brand graphics. Brand GFX. This is one of my colleagues in this world of uh, marketing and web design and such. And so, brand GFX, brand graphics. Let's go there. Then, when the page loads up, click on the top right, click on the blog. Let's go look at the blog of this of this company. If you if you went to the right address, you should see the, the home page here. Um, at the top right, click blog. That simply goes over to brandgraphics.com slash blog. This is a uh, just off topic of this. If you're gonna put a web if you're gonna put a blog on your website, it's a very good idea to put it in that format. Victor.com slash blog. Uh, Victor'swebdesigns.com slash blog. There's different ways to do it, of course. You could call it my you could call it Victor'sdesigns.com slash my blog. But it's just so common, it's almost becoming a standard to have a blog in that style, having your website slash blog. And I would recommend that because the search engines probably at some point will be expecting a blog there. And if yours is already there, that's going to be better for you in the long term. If you had something called my-amazing-blog, and when the search engines say, we're going to look for something called blog, you're going to have to rewrite your links so that they point to the right address, and that could cause a drop in your traffic. So if you are going to have a blog, use it in that sort of address. You're going to see lots of uh, tips and advice and all of that, and you're going to see that um, there's updates on a regular basis. Um, when you take my blog class, I can say that in general, if you're going to engage in blogging, I would recommend as a beginner, at least once a month, put out a new blog post. That way you're creating original content that the search engines can find. If you created a website and your competitor created a website a year ago, but you're updating it once a month and they're not, the search engines could give precedence or preference to you because you're more current than your competitor. So once a month, 100 words is a very good starting point for a beginner. Doing it once a week is even better. Writing 300 words is even better. But as a beginner, 100 words once a month is a very good starting point. In the blog class, we have activities about blog brainstorming and do's and don'ts and all of that. That's the blog class. You can get an idea of what to write because this blog has also just these snippets of information with a read more. But anyway, search in the blog for the keyword comprehensive. Search the keyword comprehensive in the blog. Comprehensive search. And you should get. top result, the comprehensive list of ways to market your business. Uh, this was published in 2013, but it's been updated this year. So one blogging trick that I can tell you, or technique, trick might have a negative connotation, technique is um, you can update your blog posts with new information and share them again. You might have published this two years ago on your newsletter or on Twitter, but you probably got new followers, new subscribers, and if you send this out, the new people will see something new and interesting, and the people that saw it previously should also see something new because you've updated it. You're not just going to simply publish it again without any changes. It's not as effective. But the one I'm going to recommend at the moment, take a quick look at the comprehensive list of ways to market your website, and then the author goes on to say, yes, we know this list is by no means comprehensive. Our, our apologies for misleading those of you who thought you'd found the holy grail of marketing. 
So maybe it should have been called the almost comprehensive, always expanding, never complete list of ways to market your business. Because this stuff always changes. There's no particular order, but these are ideas for you that, to do for marketing. Just a quick browse, let's see. Print advertising, that still works. Um, Infomercials. So how does that come up? I might, might be, it, you know. Did you search for the keyword comprehensive? Yes, I did. And you say comprehensive, let's go away. I, get, I have everything there, but it's all the way to the end. I didn't add that. I didn't have that on my page. Maximize the window. It's very funny. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't have the one. You know, you have to use some kind of bullets. You need to click on it. Because that's only a preview. Oh, okay. You click on it, and then you can see the whole blog completely. Oh, okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So let's see some possible ideas here. Uh, webinars, podcasts. Maybe you don't know what some of these means. Well, most web browsers nowadays, if you select a word in the web browser and right click you'll probably have search what is a webinar right click and search what is DMOZ etc most web browsers have a built-in search highlight something search it so notice this is a this is a sort of a stream of conscious um, blog post in that it's ideas it doesn't tell you how to do trade shows how to do uh, how to use Meetup. You might never have heard of it um, because this stuff always changes, but there's lots of ideas over here. Zip code mailings. You can actually hire the post office to send mail to a specific zip code to target that particular neighborhood, for example. Creating white papers. I don't know what a white paper is. Right click it and search. Online surveys. Short form video like Vine, Instagram, animated GIFs, etc participating in charities. So all of these are ideas. Guest blogging, comment on blogs, write blogs. All of these are ideas of what you can do to get to get your the name of your business out there, your product, your brand, your charity. Maybe I'm an artist and I simply want to showcase my work. I don't want to sell it. I just want to show the world my artwork. All of these things could still apply. Uh, some are harder than others, of course. Some are more more free or expensive than others. But uh, there's just many ways to think about here of what you can do. Alright, so um, speaking of blogs, I'll mention my company's blog. If you go over to pmdinteractive.com slash blog, it's using that format, you can go over there, you'll see some articles about different things, how to advice on Twitter, how to, uh, what are the best plugins for WordPress. Um, if, you're, if, you don't, if you're not able to take that blogging class, I've got a, I've got a three part series on, on the content of that class right there. Um, so if you go to pmdinteractive.com slash blog, build an Android app in five minutes. You can then click to read more, you can share it. Again, when I had on page two of today's article, uh, get social shares. So right here, this was shared over to Facebook, this went over to Google+, Twitter, for some reason, they deactivated the ability for you to see how many tweets something had, and I think that's kind of dumb. So this used to say, you know, 20 shares, but now Twitter is just going to say tweet it. It's not going to tell you that 20 other people also shared it. I don't know if the other companies will do that eventually. As a marketer, I thought that was very valuable, so it can tell me how effective is a particular blog post. You know, that one's been shared on on uh, Facebook four times, and that one seven times, and, and so forth. So there's top plugins, and blog checklist part one, two, three, and and then if that's really interesting, subscribe. And then you'll get the latest articles right to your inbox. Okay, so I'm going to close that. 
can close it if you'd like. I'm going to get back to the document. We're going to start on the second section, the Bing Webmaster Tools. Um, what, we, what we will do here will also apply to Google, no problem. So notice I've got a link, that's a direct link to some information, and I write that Bing is a rival search engine and one that is rising. It has its own advice to help webmasters rank well on their results page. You'll find that many of the same concepts apply to both search engines with minor variations. So in this class, as I said last week, we're going to talk about Google and Bing. Yes, Google has about 60% market share and Bing only 20%, but that's hundreds of millions of searches and hundreds of millions of users, probably billions of searches by now. 20%. And at one point, Bing had 0% market share. Now it's got 20% market share. And the statistics show that it's increasing little by little. And guess what's decreasing? Google. If one is increasing, one has to decrease. And I don't think Bing is going to become Google at some point. I don't know. Possibly. Maybe people get fed up with Google. Maybe people get fed up with Bing. And that goes back down to 2%. I don't know. But what I know at the moment is 60% and 20%, that's 80% of traffic. You might as well educate yourself on both search engines to get found. And as I said last week, Apple used to have a contract with Google. So when you bought a brand new iPhone or a brand new I, uh, Mac, Google search would be the number one search provider. That contract ran out. Now you're going to find Bing as the default search on an iPhone. Of course, you can change it back to Google or Yahoo or whatever. But most people, they just use it. They just search. There's my result. I'm done. Um, same thing with an iMac. Uh, it doesn't have Google search as the default anymore. Um, even if it has a Yahoo search built in, Yahoo is getting a lot of its results from Bing. And last I heard, they're also starting to get some results from Google. So what we learn from Bing and Google will apply anyway to Yahoo. And then there you're like at 90% market share. And as I said also, the, uh, like my friend, she has a Prius and she's got this search console in her car. And if you search, it says search with Bing. If you get a brand new Windows computer, Windows computers still outsell Mac computers. And uh, that has Bing built in. So it behooves you to educate yourself on how to use Bing effectively to get found. In this document here, you can, uh, I guess you can con hold control and then click, and that will open the website. Go ahead and open that website so we can take a look at that. That's going over to the Webmaster Tools, how to center. We'll do this together in a moment, but here's a bunch of documentation. Frequently asked questions, getting help and support, downloads and widgets, dealing with content removal and all of that, an overview of what, what you have to work with. You're going to basically see this control panel, this dashboard, that will be telling you what your traffic has been like within a time period how many hits you've gotten and such, and where is it coming from? Is it coming from Facebook? Is it coming from an email? Is it coming from search? So all of this data is very valuable because this will help us decide, am I being effective here? I'm using Twitter and Facebook and Google, and I'm spending a lot of time and effort and perhaps money on all those three networks. When I check my Bing Webmaster Tools and Google Webmaster Tools, and it tells me that my Twitter traffic is much higher than my Facebook traffic, I can decide, am I going to try harder on Facebook to bring those numbers up, or am I going to focus on Twitter? Because I might have thought Facebook's the number one network for me to be on. I'm going to try them all, and then my data will tell me what's the best one. You might be wasting your time or having an uphill battle to be on Facebook because everyone's on Facebook. And you might be getting a better audience on Instagram. So these Webmaster Tools will tell you all of that. What are the links pointing to my website? What are the, where's the traffic coming from? How long are people spending on my website? If people, if I get a lot of traffic, but people only spend 30 seconds on my site, that's a problem. They're not reading my blogs. They're not buying my products. And I never would have known that. I would have seen GoDaddy telling me, yeah, you're getting a thousand hits a month. 
but they're only staying 30 seconds on the site. So there's a similar thing for Google. We'll look at it later. But there's also a link on Google over there that you can look at. We'll get back to that. What we need to do in a moment is we're going to add and verify a site. We're going to tell Bing and Google, this is my website. Give me the data of my website. We need to verify it because what's to stop our competitor from claiming our website and seeing our traffic? The verification process is what, and we'll see how to get verified in a bit. We'll talk about sitemaps, which are very valuable. Using a WordPress plugin like WordPress SEO by Yoast will do the hard work for you. If you'd like to create your own, refer to this document. However, this is a very technical process, and it's best left up to a plugin. We'll see when we create the account. But a sitemap is basically a list of everything on your site. Every picture, every link, every page and such. But it's not a simple text document that I can type in, in Word. It's a technical document written in XML, a programming language, that has to be written a specific way or it won't work. So I, myself, that have had experience over 15 years in web design, I'm not going to write a sitemap. It's way too hard. There's plugins that do it for you. Your software should create a sitemap, and then we submit the sitemap to the search engines so that the search engines know everything about our website. And when someone searches affordable uh, restaurant web designers in San Diego, those keywords are found somewhere on one of my pages, and Bing knows about it, Google knows about it, and then they can show that page to the person searching. We're going to see an option called link additional sites. Modern SEO is not just about what you do on your site, it's also about what you do outside your site, SEM. In short, this means your business should be active on social media sites also. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, that's like the trinity, but there's also up-and-comers, Pinterest, Instagram, Snapchat, Sue, uh, Rabadaba, and a bunch of other ones that you've never heard of. Uh, even, uh, believe it or not, even Snoop Dogg has his own social network. If you want to know more about it, see me after class. Um, Bing provides a screen for you to add your additional sites. If we, if we link our social media also to Bing, it will give us data on how effective we're being on those social networks. At the moment, Google does not provide a system exactly like this because both Bing and Google are search engines. They're trying to give you the best results. Their, their service, uh, their product of their service is a page of results. And each one thinks that theirs is the best results. They're both crawling the same web, but they each think that if you search like we saw last week, we saw 7,000 results in Google and maybe 3,000 results in Bing because Bing felt these were the best. That's why we did experimenting on both. But one of the things that Google, that Bing has, that Google doesn't at the moment, is a way for you to directly and easily link your, your social media to your webmaster tools to check your traffic. Because this is their version of the product. And I don't doubt Google will eventually add a, a version of it. The search engines copy each other. When, when Google was 90% market share, it didn't have to copy anyone. Whatever it did was was it. But then as these other search engines, you know, Yahoo was, has been around before Google, but it's really fallen by the side, and Bing is increasing for various reasons. Now perhaps Bing see, uh, Google sees, well, Bing is doing this, we'll do a version of it, but we'll say we invented it, just like every company does, right? And what we want to do then to get access to all of these great things, there's the link. Bing.com slash toolbox. So in your web browser, let's go to bing.com slash toolbox. And you yourself may never have used Bing, you may never have heard of Bing, but as I said, it's a 20% market share, so that's hundreds of millions of people that have heard of it and use it. Uh, to access this, it's free. We just need to sign in. You can sign in with a Microsoft account, which is Hotmail, Outlook, Xbox, 
you know, a Microsoft account. If you don't have a Microsoft account, you can create an account and you can use your existing Gmail or Cox at Home or whatever you have, AT&T, or create a Microsoft account. So if we're on this screen here, either sign in with your Hotmail slash Outlook, whatever you have, or create an account. Uh, creating an account will be on the next screen. I don't make it that obvious, but click either one of those and you can try to sign in. And notice, sign up now, and we will give you $100 credit for search advertising on the Yahoo Bing network. Because as I said on the first day, the easy way to get ranked is to reach into your wallet and pay for ranking. Pay per click, which we don't address very much in this class. We do the free stuff. But here, they'll give you $100 to start off to advertise on Yahoo and Bing. I'm going to click Sign In. I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in with it. If you don't have an account, there should be a relatively easy process to... It's not very easy on my I've got an account, but I think it's been so long. Really, they will let me re-sign up, though, will they? If you have a different email address, you can sign up with a different email address. Or you can create a brand new account. So either take a moment to sign in or click sign up. Call me over if you need any help. I can't show you exactly what this looks like because it's different for everyone. But go ahead and try to sign in or sign up. Perfect. That's all you want to see. Like really? Yeah. The search engine or the, the search engine. Because hmm. yeah. like you know when they um because I have both the Firefox and the Microsoft the Xbox. Uh-huh. Um sometimes I'm trying to uh, to log in the tool mm -hmm. in my browser and Firefox, then I go to the internet export. The internet export hmm. immediate immediately then it lists the screen the thing the, the search engine. Yes. Well, all of them, all of them do. Even with Internet Explorer, you can change the default engine to Google or Yahoo or whatever. But each one is going to favor their own. Google, Google Chrome, obviously, is going to be linked to Google, and then Internet Explorer is going to be linked to Bing and Yahoo. I think. I mean, and Firefox. I think it links to Yahoo. Uh, so you can change them, but. On these computers, I, I think, yeah, 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 yeah. but it's all search, and and uh, as I said, and as we saw here, whatever we do to optimize on Bing will automatically show up on Yahoo anyway. So um, we're reaching all the audience. Yeah, they have a contract. Yahoo has a contract with Bing at the moment, and they started a new contract with Google as well. So when someone searches on Yahoo, they're going to get some results from Bing or Google anyway. If you don't want to do this now, that's fine. You can, of course, follow along and uh, do this at home. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, these uh, computers in this lab, they have a software called Deep Freeze, which is that if you log into anything and you forget to log out, no problem, because the computer resets to factory settings. On the bottom right corner, there's this little polar bear staring at us. It's a little polar bear. Not a weasel. It's a polar bear, and uh, that means Deep Freeze is active. Anything you do to these computers, once you restart the computer, gets erased, goes back to factory settings. So if you're wary about logging in on our computers, you don't have to. You can do it at home. Or uh, remember, we've got deep freeze. Everything will erase. Let me give you a minute or so. Everyone should log in. Um, hopefully you see something that looks like mine. If it looks a little different, call me over. and We want to make sure we're all on the same track. Mm.
So if you're not quite here yet, that's okay. I'm going to move on. And in general, what we've got here, these Bing Webmaster tools, I'll show you an example. This is, one of, this is my test account, but I'll show you an example of a real account a little later. Where here we would see all of the sites that we've added to our account. We can add as many as we want, I think up to a hundred. Um, and what this will do is it will give us all this information such as are there any problems with your site? Are there broken links, for example? What are the clicks from search and appeared in search? Our site might have appeared a hundred times in search and we might have gotten 20 clicks from this time period. Notice this says in the last 30 days. The longer you have the setup, the more data it will tell you. So it won't go back in time to give you data of the past. It will be within this time period since we set it up. We'll see what pages crawled and pages indexed means, but that's basically what do the search engines, in this case Bing, what does it know about you, about your website. And there's going to be blog posts and such from Bing that tell you announcing the Bing Mobile Friendliness Test Tool. It's saying that if your website is uh, mobile friendly or not, it will run a test here to tell you how well it fits into that. That's a new thing. If your website is not mobile friendly, if it doesn't pop up well on a, on a mobile device, now that's going to be a detriment to your rankings. The way this will work then is, at the top, it asks us to add a site. So if we've got a website, we want to add it here. Enter site URL. Sorry, question. Um, can we add like Facebook or um, other accounts? We don't add some of those sites directly, like Facebook, but we can attach Facebook <coughs> to your site on the next screen that we'll see. So it will show us the traffic of our Facebook site relative to our main site. So here is just going to be a regular website. Everyone should, um, if you're able to, if not, you can do it at home. But I'm going to add an address here. So I'm going to click Add. And the first thing that it asks is, do you have a sitemap? Now, again, I might not have a sitemap ready, but this is something that I do recommend that you have, and we'll talk about it in more detail a little bit later. Um, you'll often see a little info bubble. Um, if something is confusing, you can put your mouse over it and it might help you. And it says, note, you can add one later. So I don't have one handy at the moment. I don't know what my site map is. I'll add it later. There's a question. When do you receive the most traffic to this site in your time of day, local time? The point of this is that Google, uh, Bing and Google are going to be logging into your site once in a while to check, is there anything new? Are there updates? Are there broken links? Therefore, it could interfere with your regular site traffic. That's not really a big issue that I've dealt with, but if you've got a complex site with a lot of links and Bing and Google are checking your site out at the wrong time, it could slow down your site. I don't know what the most popular times of day of my site visits are. That's why I'm just going to leave it all day default. I don't know. But if we know that between 9 and 5 is when we get the most traffic, I could tell Bing, hey, don't check out my site during these hours, please. Don't check it out during these hours, but I'm going to leave it on the default. <coughs> I don't know what the popular times of my site are at the moment. So here, simply, I, I didn't really do anything. I'm just going to click Add. This is the part where I always then have to take 
a pause in the recording to usually help people individually. Because we get to this point and it says, okay, great, you've claimed this website, now let's verify it. If someone were to ask me, um, where do you live? I would say, I live up on that big mansion in La Jolla. Well, they're not going to believe me until I get my butler to open the door. So here I have to convince Bing and Google when we do Google that this is my website, not my competitor's website. And there's a few ways to do it. You can choose one of these three. You don't do all three of them. You choose one of them. First option in my case says place an XML file on your web server. It says download this file which has your own unique code. You're going to download it and then you're going to upload it to your website. <clears throat> Bing is then going to confirm that that file exists on your server when you click verify at the bottom. And then you will get a big green verification icon, I think. Obviously, if I'm trying to do this for my competitor, I cannot log into their server. I don't have their password to add this file. So that's how your competitor is stymied from doing it to yours. Okay, let's say I don't know what this means. What's a web server? I don't have FTP access. Okay, here's another way. Number two, copy and paste a meta tag in your default web page. This line here, this, this one line of code in the gray box, has also your unique identifier. And what it's saying is you need to copy this and paste this code on your home page. But in the code, here's an example. In the code of your site, you'll see HTML head. Inside of the head section, you're going to paste your unique meta tag. Then you're going to come back to Bing and click Verify. Bing will go to your home page, will look for that code, and say, great, you're verified. The third option, I wouldn't even bother with. This is, honestly, it's complicated. I never do this one, even it's complicated for me. Because this is adding a C name and complicated server stuff based on your service provider. If you've got GoDaddy, if you've got localweb.com, if you've got heartinternet.co, notice I don't exactly see wordpress.com. This is just going to give you instructions on how to do this pretty technical thing. I wouldn't do it, I wouldn't do option three. I would do option one or two. And I can't I can't then lecture and say, okay, everyone, do this, this, and this. It's going to vary by your website. So we're going to take a moment to pause at this point that if you would like to try to do this right now and need a little help, call me over. I'll help you out because if you want to do this, you want to set it up as soon as possible for it to collect the data. So I'm going to pause the recorder and we'll go on in a moment. If you need help, call me over to see if we can get this done. <laughs> 